What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all having an awesome day and as always it's Paul from Ecommerce Gold and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to use Shopify with WordPress which is a great option to bring you two of the most popular options for e-commerce and web building together into one useful package. Now for this tutorial you are going to need two different things. The first thing is you're going to need a WordPress website and the second is you're going to need a Shopify account and if you haven't already got a Shopify account I'll leave my affiliate link in the description below and as always I really appreciate it if you go through that link because it helps me out at no additional cost to you. Now once you've got these two set up you can get started with this tutorial so I'm going to jump into my computer and get this started. But I do just want to clear one thing up before I get started and that's when you're using Shopify and you go onto the paid package for this you only need the Shopify Lite account which is $9 a month. You don't need to go for one of the web builder accounts which are the Shopify Basic, Shopify Standard and Shopify Advanced. You just need Shopify Lite because you just need one piece of functionality which as I say is $9 a month. But when you're on your free trial which you get for 14 days when you sign up to Shopify you'll have access to pretty much all of the features on Shopify before you move on to that paid package if that makes sense. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add the functionality for buy button into the Shopify dashboard and what we're going to do for this is we're going to come and click on this plus icon here and it will bring a pop-up of options that you can add for sales channels for Shopify. Now when you're on the Shopify Lite package a lot of these won't be available because these are only available to people who are on the full website builder package but you're not bothered about that because you just want one piece of functionality which is this which is the buy button. So once again we're going to click the plus icon and this will add this functionality to your Shopify dashboard. It does take a couple of seconds to set this up when it installs and when it does install what you'll see is buy button is now available as an option under sales channels. Now before you can start importing your products into WordPress you first need to create them. Now I'm not going to do that in this video because I've already created a tutorial video on how to do that which I'll leave a link to in the card above and also in the description below because I don't want this video to be too long and I go into creating a product in much more detail in that video. So once you've created your products and you want to start adding them to WordPress what you do is you come over and you want to click on the create a buy button. Now there's two options in here, you can create a product button or you can create a collection button. For the first example we're going to create a product button. So what you do is click on product button and it will bring a pop-up up which shows you all the products that you have created within Shopify. And for this one I'm going to choose the Sterling Silver Trilogy Ring. So what I do is you click on it, select it, and it will take you through to the customization screen. And there's three different options when it comes to actually being able to add a buy button to WordPress. One of them is the full view here, which makes it appear like a full product e-commerce page. This is really good if you want to have that full e-commerce feel on your WordPress website. It's the one I would go for if I was selling products or something like that. The second option is the basic one, which is a simple button. This is ideal if you've created, say, a sales page within your WordPress website and you just want a way for people to be able to buy the product from you. Maybe it's an info product or a digital product, something like that. You can set that up with just having the simple buy button. And the final option is the classic view, which looks like this, which is a very basic um, display. And it almost appears like it will be a in your category pages, something like that. For me, it would very much come down to I'd either use the full view or I would use the basic one depending on what I'm selling on my site. So for this example, I'm going to use the full view. So it looks like a complete e-commerce page. So those are the views. The second thing you want to set is the actions when people click on the buy button. So you can have it so people just add the product to the cart and then they can carry on shopping. Or the other option is you can send them directly to the checkout. As you can see, the text on the button changes to buy now. If you're selling products and you want them to stay on your site, I would recommend that you go with the, just that it adds the product to the cart rather than the direct to checkout, because you wanna encourage people to buy as much from you as possible when it comes to e-commerce. So that's what I would go with. If I was doing, say an info product, I would have it as the buy now option, so that I would instantly check out for that product. It's very much whatever suits the product you're selling. Now there are a few more options on this page. You can change the style of the button, so you can change the color of it, the size of it, things like that, so it fits your brand better. 
You can also change a few layout options on the page. So you can show the quantity field if you want to, as you can see it appears with one there. You can change the text on the button, even though add to cart just seems to work, it seems to convert quite well. And then there's a few options for text and things like that. So the final thing is the advanced setting, and this is where you set up the checkout behavior. You can either have it so it appears as a sidebar pop-out, or you can have it so it redirects to the checkout page. It's up to you which one you want, but generally if you want people to carry on browsing your site, I'd have it occur in the pop-up rather than redirect to the page. The redirect is great if you want people to buy it straight away, but if you want people to carry on browsing, I would recommend the pop-up because it doesn't take them away from the product area of your website. So once you've got everything set up and you're happy with how it looks, what you do is you click on next and you'll see the code appears in this box and you just wanna click the button, copy code. Then it's time to go into your WordPress website. Now, when it comes to adding the code to your WordPress website, there's two options you can choose. You can either create a post page or a normal page. I would recommend using the pages because if you're blogging on your website and you create a post, your products are gonna start appearing in your blog feed and that's not something you wanna happen. So I would recommend doing it on a page rather than a post. And what you wanna do is go into pages and click add new in the top left corner. Now, when it comes to the SEO options of your page, what you want to do is you want to set these in WordPress rather than setting them in Shopify. So that things like your page title, your URL, and your meta information, if you've got an SEO plugin installed, you want to do on WordPress rather than doing this on Shopify. So for this, we'll do Sterling Silver Trilogy Ring, for example. Then when you want to add the code, what you do is click on the plus icon here. I mean, you wanna find this custom HTML block. Now you may have to start typing custom HTML in the search bar or actually go on the browse all feature to find this block. But what you wanna do is click custom HTML and then you wanna paste the code you copied from Shopify into this box. So you'll paste it in like that and then you can preview what this looks like. So click the preview button and it shows what this is gonna look like on the front of your site. And as you can see, this appears as a full e-commerce page. I think it looks really, really good and it looks really, really professional. And um, once you're happy with this, what you can do is come over, click the publish page and publish this post. And then we'll see what this looks like in the front end of our website. Now, as you can see, it displays really, really well. It looks like a proper e-commerce page. It looks like it would if you had something like WooCommerce or you had Equid. It displays in a very similar way. I really like this, as I've probably already said already. So that's how you can add a single product to a WordPress website. What about if you wanna add a collection? Well, if you haven't already created your collections, I'll leave another link to another tutorial I've done on complete collections on Shopify because there are a few things you do need to learn in terms of manual collections and automated collections. So if you want to learn more about that, I say I'll leave a link in the card above and I'll leave a link in the description below to my tutorial video on that because I go into that in way more detail. Now creating a collection for your WordPress site is very similar to creating a single product. So you just click create a buy button, but this time we're going to go for the collection option here and we're going to select the proposal rings and click select to take it through to the customizer. Now for this, you don't get layout options the same way you do for the single product. Instead, you can add another option when it comes to when people click on the button. And what this does is you can have it so it opens the product details. And what this does is it actually creates a pop-up within your WordPress site so people can see almost a full product listing within a pop-up screen. This is really good if you're listing products and you wanna create more of a buyer environment so they can learn more about the product to entice them to buy. So that's the option I'm gonna stick with this time. Otherwise, you can just have it so the product adds to cart or you can have it so it's direct to checkout. But for this, I'm gonna go with open product details. Now, as with the single product, you can edit the style of the buttons. There's some layout options, the shopping cart. But for this one, you do get the detailed pop-up option. And what this does is it appears like this. So you have this pop-up option come out with the title, the price, add to cart, and your description and your product images. And you can edit the way this looks so that it fits your brand better. But once you're happy with how your collection is gonna appear, once again, you click on the next in the top right-hand corner and you copy the code. And for this, we're gonna add a new page and we're gonna call this Proposal Rings Collection. And once again, as with the simple product, we're gonna do the custom HTML, 
paste that in and preview it. And as you can see, the products appear like this, and we're going to publish this page. And let's take a look and see what this looks like in the front end of the site. So as you can see, the proposal rings collection appears there. And when you click on the view product, you have this lovely little pop-up appear. I think this is a really good option if you're selling products because you're gonna be able to add your products and make it look really professional, really simply. It just works really, really well. So that is how you add products to WordPress using Shopify. It really is a simple process. You do all the work in creating your products and collections in Shopify. Then you just literally copy and paste the code into your WordPress site and it appears and it looks really, really good. There is another benefit to this as well from a security standpoint in the fact of because your WordPress site and your Shopify site are completely separate, there's no sensitive customer information such as names, addresses, contact details in your WordPress site. This is all managed in your Shopify dashboard. So it does add an additional layer of security just in case your WordPress site gets hacked because unfortunately that does happen to sites if the security isn't up to scratch. So there you go guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video and you found this video helpful. If you have, please smash that like button. If you want to see more content like this, consider hitting that subscribe button. And if you really, really enjoyed this video and really, really found it helpful, you can let me know by buying me a coffee using the link in the description below and I really do appreciate it. So once again guys, thank you so much for watching. Stay awesome and I'll see you all in the next video.